Hi, and welcome to it. It's Travel Thursday, and today we're going a little bit, I'd say, off script, and we're doing something which is about wonderful Johannesburg. Now, there's always so much negativity about our big uh, cities here in South Africa, especially here in the big smoke. But something that came up on my ra my radar because I'm really interested in walking, which I think I've mentioned a thousand times before, is the wilds. Now, the wilds was a destination for people to go and have picnics when I was kind of, when God was a boy, actually, and I was young. And then all of a sudden it fell into disrepair and then there were people being mugged and this whole thing. And everybody's going like, we can't go to the wilds. Now, this is right in the middle of our city, but something fantastic happened. There's an artist that came along and decided, actually, let's take back our space and let's make it beautiful and let's do the same thing everywhere. So, James Delaney, how did it go from an, being an artist to actually reclaiming one of our green areas? Well, I'm not only an artist, I'm also a lover of plants. And so, for me, it was a natural progression to be working in green spaces and looking after the plants and flowers. Um, and the art fed into that because the art became a way to draw people back into the wilds because I'd been working there for a few years and fixing it up and making it nice where people wouldn't believe me that it was a good place to visit and they were still so fearful of it. And so I came up with the idea of doing the, the cut out metal sculptures, which have now become a big part of the work that I do in my studio. Um, it originated in the wilds because I, I needed something that was outdoors and would work well on social media and draw people back to the bog. So for people who have never been to the wilds, tell us a bit about it, what is, a bit about its history, how big it is, where it is, etc. It's just north of the city centre, wedged between the inner city areas of Berea and Hilbra to its south. And in the north, you've got Killarney, Houghton and the wealthy northern suburbs. It's 40 acres and it was laid out in the 1930s and planted in subsequent decades. But unusual for a botanical garden in South Africa, it was only planted with indigenous plants. So most botanical gardens you go to will have oak trees and pine trees and things. This isn't. It has an amazing diversity of plant species, and they're all indigenous. And the 40 acres is divided in half by a road, and there's a pedestrian bridge linking the two sides. I started working more on the west side that's next to where I live, and it was the more park-like side, and so I focused attention there originally. I subsequently moved across to the East Wilds and fixed that up, and um, both sides are beautiful, but in quite different ways. So the West side faces south. It's got a great view of the city skyline, and it's more sheltered from, from the north sun, so it's cooler, and a lot of flower beds and grass areas, as well as lovely forests. The east side faces north, and it's hotter and drier and more what you'd expect of a high-felt kopi. Um, beautiful trees, but the trees are smaller. Um, it's more arid, and there's beautiful high-felt grassland there. Um, and so both sides have a, have, a, have a different offering. So how long has it been to actually entice people to come back and walk there? Because, I mean, it, it's got the most amazing walks and views and everything, apart from the fact it's become a bit of an outdoor art gallery. Yeah, not only my work. I've encouraged other artists to also show their work. So there, there are pieces all over. There are a lot of mosaic works by a variety of artists, including the late Drew Lindsay. He must have done about 15 pieces around the wild, it's around all the water fountains, various large pieces, the one at Jock's View, um, and other artists have, have donated work too. So if artists come to me and they have an idea for something, I tend to encourage it because I think art and nature make a lovely symbiotic connection, and and the more the better. Um, and it's it's added such a such a richness to to the reserve. So. There's five or six kilometers of walking trails. You're getting like a lovely walk and some of it's quite an incline. So you're getting a bit of exercise. Then that combined with beautiful views, north and south, there's about 10 different viewpoints up on top of the copies where you can sit and chill and drink your morning coffee and take in the view. And then as you meander around the walkways, you're not only encountering nature, but also artworks. So it, it makes for a, 
a really varied and, and rich experience. And you're not going to do it all in a day. I mean, I, it took me months to actually get around all the pathways. I mean, there's so many little nooks and crannies, which I'm still discovering now after eight years of working there. It's, a, it's really an incredible place. And the thing is, is that also now the Friends of the Wilds and a whole bunch of people decided to get involved and retake that green space and create it as a wonderful land for people to go and wander around in. How easy would it be for people in other towns and cities to actually get something like that going? I mean, what drove you? Was it just actually making it back into a nice parkland? Did you get any help in the beginning or was it all just you doing and driving the entire thing? At the beginning, it was it was me. I would say the first three years was me just kind of chipping away. I didn't realize the scale of the project or, or kind of what it might become. And I had a few people to help me, particularly Talani and Como, who worked for me on weekends. And Talani and I would do a lot of the kind of manual labor. And then with time, I started to draw in like-minded people who wanted to help out as well, either making financial contributions or coming to work as volunteers. Um, and then it kind of reached a tipping point where I realized it was actually too big a project for just me on my own. and I, I needed more resources, but also I, I needed to make sure that it was going to be sustainable because what happened if I moved somewhere else and then I wasn't involved and the thing would fall apart again? So it, it needed a like a groundswell behind that could come and really take it on. Um, and it's worked. We've now got about 10,000 people on the Facebook page. We've had about 2,000 volunteers working there. We've had contributions totaling maybe, I don't know, two, three million rands over the years, which have done a lot of the building work. Um, so it's become a, become a big project. Um, and I feel confident now that it doesn't really matter my involvement there's enough movement behind it. And you can see that if you just go into the Facebook group and you see all the volunteers leading walking groups and the yoga on Sunday mornings and meditation classes and the classes for the, the walking groups for the, the oldies, the wise wildies on a Tuesday morning, just lots of beautiful initiatives happening. And, and so it becomes self-sustaining. And I mean, this is actually a municipal area and it should have been looked after by city parks. So do you think that if people take this as an initiative, that they can do the same? We need to actually take back the ownership if things are not being done by municipalities, basically. But how many people have come to visit there now? I mean, have you, are you getting lots and lots of people, more and more people coming? And how do you know how many people have been? I don't. Um, we don't have any technology there to, to, to measure that, and city parks don't measure it. So... You know, I look at Google Maps and I see the, the trends on there. We've had 900,000 people looking at the East Wilds in the past year or two. Um, so there's, there's certainly a lot of digital activity around it. I don't know how many feet it translates into, but if you try and get into the wilds on the weekend, you'll know there's always a traffic jam to get into the car park. So it's a, it's a, it's a, a much busier place these days. It never feels congested, though, because it's so big. With 40 acres and six kilometers of trails, you can, you know, can have a 1,000 people there, and you're still going to feel quite, quite relaxed. Um, but it's, it's got numbers. Um, and, and I think it's very doable in nature reserves and parks elsewhere. And it certainly happened in Joburg. We look at Zoo Lake, the James and Ethel Gray Park, um, many of the little neighborhood parks, and, and over the years, people have approached me and said, well, how do we do it? And I've had calls from people in Pretoria and from Cape Town and from KZN who live next to a derelict area saying, how do they go about fixing it up? Um, and, and the idea seems to have caught on. And I think the, the COVID lockdown time focused attention on neighborhood spaces because people weren't allowed to travel. So they started walking locally and exploring their local environment. And they realized, you know, damn, there's parks here and these parks should be in good condition and we should be using them. And so the idea is, has really caught on. Well, I think that anybody coming up to Johannesburg should really set some time aside to go and have a look at this because it is amazing to have this right in the middle of well, the watershed areas between, as you said, Hillbrow and Houghton. We never realize how close those two are together. And the one is now full of 
falling into decay and the other one is like all those grand houses and you can see both sides of the city all at once. So definitely for me, a destination for any tourist coming up to Johannesburg, wherever the world they come from. And I want to just say personally, thank you, because I mean, I'm loving walking the wilds, doing the pictures, the, I mean, the most incredible views. And as you said, also the yoga on the Sunday morning down by the river. Is the water in the dams now? Because when I've been there a few times, there hasn't been water. Yeah, it, it, it started running again recently, but it was switched off because now city parks, we work now much better together with city parks. They are now... Um, sealing all the ponds because the ponds we got the water flowing but it was leaking quite a lot out of the ponds um, so they're going to seal them all and then we'll switch on the water system which has been developed by Lawrence Sachs who's a volunteer wildy and and then it should work um, and it makes such a difference when you've got water thro flowing through that park especially in winter now when it's dry the water is just beautiful it's like so calming for the soul so if people want to get involved, obviously they can find you on Facebook with Friends of the Wilds. If they want some of your artwork when they've come through and had a look and thought, oh, I need one of those, they can just get hold of you through the same way, yes? Yeah, I'll come, come to Victoria Yards for a coffee and take a walk around the studios there. Another destination point as well, Victoria Yards, absolutely wonderful. There are these wonderful places that are now happening in Johannesburg. So I think that's great for the future, and I'm, I think it's really nice that the municipality are taking note of what people want when they've started it and actually then getting involved as well instead of just saying, oh, well, you can just do it yourself. So maybe that's something we need that groundswell throughout the whole of South Africa. We can have all these little wonderful destinations that we can just pop into and out of every all the time. So James, thank you for everything you do. <laughs> pleasure, pleasure. And of course, if you want to find out more about the wilds, do go onto Facebook and have a look at it. Get in touch with James if you're in another town or city in South Africa. I'm sure he won't mind if you bother him. I see he's going to smile at me now and say, absolutely, Mel, that's the way to go. <laughs> and of course, if you're coming up to Johannesburg, do take a look. Go to Northcliffe Hill. Go and have a look at the parks. Go out to Walter Sisulu. We have the most amazing bushveld spaces and what should we say, grassland spaces. And they're definitely well worth visiting and right on your doorstep. We'll catch you again next week.